things sound just like the CD watch. Yeah, I like you, yeah, you like me But I can see, yes, yeah, sir, I, 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 I can see, I can see, I can see, yes, yeah, sir, I, 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 I. Can you see the stars from above? It's so blinding, there's no tonight you Chrisette Michelle, a songbird with some of the smoothest vocals and melodies you ever did hear, would showcase to the world her many vocal talents, and as she was blessed, she continued to give back and bless others, through her music and through her acts of service. She continued on this journey for 10 long years, but when America's political and racial tension came to an all-time high, with the election of Donald J. Trump as president, Chrisette figured she'd use that same voice to bridge the gap and be a ray of hope in a world of darkness but quickly found herself in the middle of a media war zone. After a gospel performance at the inaugural ball, everything would be stripped from her, and even some of her closest friends and family would abandon her. She would ultimately find peace and refuge with her creator, and her light shines even brighter today because of it. This is the triumph of Chrisette Michelle. If there are any other artists you'd like to see covered in the Triumphant Arise series, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. Let's get started. Chrisette Michelle Payne was born on December 8, 1982, and brought up in Long Island, New York. She discovered love for singing very early, delivering her first solo performance in the choir at church at the tender age of five. Her loving family were instrumental in setting her up for success. Her father was a sociologist by day and played the organ at their church. Her mother was a psychologist by day and the choir director at their church, so they were heavily involved in her emotional development as well as her artistic development. Growing up, she didn't have records playing in their house, rather actual instruments, and over time she would begin mastering the piano, the organ, the drums, and even tried her hand at the family violin. By the time she was a teenager, she was writing her own songs and performing them at local talent shows. She even led gospel choirs in high school. She attended Five Towns College and graduated with a vocal performance degree. By now, she was ready to take flight and become a professional singer. In establishing her sound, she would draw inspiration from the greats like Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, and Sarah Vaughan. She would sign with Four Kings Production and get to work recording a handful of demos to shop around at events tailored for independent artists. One song in particular, called I'ma Make It, spoke to her desire to go and conquer everything she set out for, and she did just that when she won a national singing competition. It's time for me to start the making big girl blow Step out of my jeans and put my grown clothes on Open up my mouth and be an intellectual I'm a big girl now It wouldn't be too long before Chrisette caught the attention of L.A. Reid, and after her audition, he signed her to Island Def Jam that same day. This put her in the company of big-time producers like Babyface, Will I Am, and John Legend, who were immediately blown away by her vocal talents and abilities. It was as if the voices of the ancestors before had came back in the form of this young, hip, mid-2000s starlet, and it was very refreshing seeing a big record label take a chance on such a naturally gifted talent and several big names wanted to get next to her to mentor her throughout her musical journey. And I walk onto the stage to sing a song with Patti LaBelle, and she told me to take my shoes off because they weren't high enough. And then she had a, an array of Louboutins that were six inches uh, on the stage, and I had to wear those for the rest of my performance because divas only wear stilettos. I was introduced to the music industry the day I got signed, so she was one of my mentors. It was a crash course. Being on stage with Patti was like going to school. Uh, and then the scariest part on that day was she wanted to riff back and forth with me. And I was like, you're kidding. 
I don't even know what to do. She would go on to write and sing hooks for several hip hop artists like Nas's song Still Dreamin', Hope, and his single Can't Forget About You. She would also appear on the game song Let Us Live, on Jay-Z's hit single Lost One, and on Ghostface Killer's song Slow Down. All the while, she worked with L.A. Reid and Babyface for her debut album, initially titled Golden, named after one of the beautiful songs on the project, which talked about the sacred commitment one makes to their spouse, the first of many wedding anthems that she would create. Her album would also consist of summer jams like Let's Rock and Like a Dream, and an ode to her father on the song Your Joy. Her album, officially titled I Am Chrisette Michelle, would be released on June 18, 2007, and featured an eclectic blend of jazz, hip-hop, alternative rock, and gospel styles. Propelled by the lead singles, If I Have My Way and Best of Me, which charted at number 24 on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart and number 21 on the U.S. Hot Adult Contemporary Tracks respectfully. The album, which was ultimately classified as Neo Soul, didn't receive much promotion and as a result peaked at number 29 on the album charts, only selling 26,000 copies in its first week. But as time went on, Chrisette, who never passed up an opportunity to sing, began touring, co-headlining the Art of Love tour with her cousin, singer-songwriter Raheem Devon, in 2008, and doing her own networking. Things would pick up, and within a year and a half, the album had sold over 400,000 copies, and its third single, Be OK, which featured Will I Am, would snag Chrisette a Grammy Award for Best Urban Alternative Performance in 2009. The last single, Love Is You, became a fan favorite and is often sang at her concerts. A lot of Chrisette's music was filled with parables and life lessons. Although she didn't want the lyrics to come across too preachy, she was able to find the right balance. A leftover track not used on the album, titled Girl Respect Yourself, would later appear on the 2008 soundtrack for the hit show Girlfriends, in which Chrisette would also make an appearance with another song, A Day in the Life. Could you buy me a day in your life When I'm wearing the clothes that you wear And could you give me your dimes for a day And just for one day take my place See mama says that I am beautiful Yeah And I am lovely the way that I am but if I am so sweet, why won't life just give me what you have, what you have, what you have? Listen, the way I see it, we got one or two choices. We can give up and leave, or we can stay in the game and change the game. I plan to stay in the game and win the game. She would also appear on the Root song Rising Up from their album Rising Down that year. And with the last name Payne, Chrisette would be enlisted to write and record a music video with the cast of Tyler Perry's hit show House of Pain for the show's second season. Def Jam and Chrisette Michelle to make a music video. When CBS approached me about writing a song for Tyler Perry's House of Pain, I jumped at the chance. My last name is Pain. Everybody used to call me a pain in the neck. So I got to take the metaphor of pain and finally flip it for the kids who ever made fun of me in school. Now I'm singing on Tyler TV show. Now clips of the music video would air during the commercial break, and I read somewhere that the full video was featured on the show's website, but I never saw it. There are snippets online, but if anyone has the full thing, let me know, as I would love to see it. Now the next few years would be monumental for Chrisette. After her Grammy win, she would gear up for the release of her sophomore album, Epiphany, spearheaded by the title track. The song would peak at number 14 
on the R&B hip hop charts, becoming her highest charting solo single to date. The music video was among the first that would ever feature Drake and would be among the first to establish a rapport between Chrisette and the new wave of mainstream talent that would usher in. Epiphany, the album, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 83,000 copies in its first week. The album was more pop themed and less jazzy than the first album, but fit right in with the sound that was ever so rampant at the time, featuring production by Chuck Harmony and Dark Child and Dave Odd, among others. Its next singles, Blame It On Me and What You Do, which featured Neo on background vocals, were minor hits, although songs like Playing Our Song and Another One would have fared well on the radio. But all in all, it was a great album, and critics stated that Chrisette managed to avoid the sophomore slump. The last single, All I Ever Think About, wouldn't get a video. Instead, a video for the fan favorite song, Fragile, would be shot, and featured upcoming rapper Wale as her love interest, and he would deliver a verse not heard on the album. Chrisette would later collaborate with Wale on the song Shades, which spoke to the issues of colorism and reinforced the fact that all shades of black are beautiful. I love that track. She would also appear on Eric Benet's Lost in Time album and would also team up with Rick Ross on several songs as her vocals complemented his flow. Their first collaboration was on his single Mafia Music 2, for which they shot a music video, and Chrisette would also embark on the 20 City Epiphany tour around this time. She would then make an appearance on the gospel singing show Sunday Best, donning a brand new look. Many fans were shocked to see that she did the big chop, which was a very bold move at that time. And it would take its time for some people to get accustomed to it, most notably online spectators. Still, for the performance, she wowed the crowd and the judges over with her cover of Donnie McClurkin's anthem Stand, in which she received a standing ovation from everyone in the audience. After doing Essence tours and shows with Mary J. Blige, she would get to work on her new album titled Let Freedom Reign, which explores her freedom to break from the shackles of the expectations from others, whether it be how she wears her hair, the criticism she's received about her weight on and off, or the pressures to put out more sensual music. The whole concept revolved around Chrisette no longer being afraid to say what she really thinks. She said, this album is about me just saying what I need to say, feeling what I need to feel, dressing how I want to dress, and emoting how I want to. She would team up with Rick Ross again, alongside Drake, for what would be the biggest collaboration of her career, Aston Martin Music. The single would reach number two on the R&B charts and would be certified triple platinum in the States and silver in the UK. The song would catapult Chrisette to the forefront in ways that she hadn't been there before. It was her first full introduction into mainstream media and her album sales would skyrocket as so many new fans were intrigued by her voice. She and Rick Ross would do several tour spots together and the feedback she got from the crowds only gave her more motivation to create. She would drop a mixtape called Love Thy Brother ahead of the album's release, which featured Aston Martin music with her singing the whole song and her brother Lim Payne delivering a verse. And it's my favorite version of that song. She also previewed Aston Martin music too. Her full album, Let Freedom Reign, also had yet another collaboration with Rick Ross called So In Love, which was sure to be a moderate hit if released properly. The stars were aligning, and Chrisette could feel that this project was going to be major. She and Rick Ross were also set to perform Aston Martin Music at the Soul Train Awards, and as the only hip-hop act scheduled to perform that night, major opportunities were riding on this performance. However, everything would fall apart when Rick abruptly left the award show and went home right before the pair were set to hit the stage. So we get a gig to do the song at the Soul Train Awards. I am a soul singer. Let's keep that in mind. Okay. I'm a soul singer. 
when I perform at something like the Soul Train Awards, my album sales go up by 50%. Not only that, it was also going to show hip hop in a beautiful light. I had on a gown, he had on a tuxedo, we had dancers and lights, it was fantastic. So you guys already came up with the stage we, setup, everything. We rehearsed, we were on stage together. We rehearsed the whole entire thing, the lighting, blocking, and all that stuff. I was so excited. I'm upstairs hours later after the rehearsals and I'm seated in my dressing room with my gown on and my top hat. I'm like, mommy, look, I look just like the album cover. I mean, I was excited. Red lipstick, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Somebody comes over to me right before I get up to go on stage and they say, Rick Ross has left the building. What do you mean Rick Ross left the building? What happened? Did, oh no, is he sick? That's what I'm thinking. Is he sick? So I text them on the cell phone. Hey, Rick, you okay? They said, you know what? He actually got a little bit upset because he didn't win. His, the award that he was expected to win. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't nominated for any awards. And I'll be honest, I didn't even know he was nominated. I thought we was just doing a show for the love of music. I was excited to be there. Right. So, we don't perform. So, when he told you... Um, he didn't tell me. Uh, he, but he didn't respond to the text? So, you text him, are you okay? Rick, Crickets. Rick, you okay? Are you alright? Rick, did you really leave? Rick is my, like, we're cool. This is not just like a, you know, you hand in a song to, you know, some anonymous, you know, company and they go place it with a rapper. This was, we was at the studio, we was riding around in the Aston Martin and in the, in the Rolls and we went to go out to eat with the whole crew. We, we're cool. We perform together whenever we're together. I was so upset. Have you spoken to him since then? I can't get in touch with my boy. So I'm wondering, you know, just honestly, is he okay? You know what I mean? Like, are, is everything okay? Then I'm wondering, how does this make us look to corporate America? Because you got folks spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on putting a show together. And then the only rap artist for the whole entire show, the only hip-hop representation for the whole show, the producer of the show even came up to me and was like, Chrisette, you don't understand, I'm so excited about this, I'm so excited to dress hip-hop up and put it on this stage. They were beyond excited. And the producers are friends of mine. For, for hip-hop to walk out like that, you know what I mean? To me, that's what it meant. Mm. To me, it was like hip-hop just misrepresented itself. Because we, that's not who we are. We are people who have fought through the struggle. We've came up from the ground. We've paved the way for people to, to, to be entrepreneurs, to come into corporate America. So when corporate America welcomes us, we don't just leave. Chrisette could not contain her anger. She would take to her blog to vent her frustration about the entire situation, saying, if this is the way hip-hop is, then I denounce it. This is not about ego. This is about what I can bring to the world. My life is for the people. I live to give. It's my desire to bring life and freedom, light and love everywhere I go. Upward mobility in the brown skin community. Who stands off at an award show because they didn't win? An award is winning at being as stuck in a category as possible. Congratulations to all the trophy holders who won at being the most like everyone else. They say I'm eclectic, I'm underrated, I'm different. Well if I win an award it's because I paved the way. Every award I've won was new in its category. You know why? Because I'm amazing at being my damn self. The Grammy Award I won was in Best Alternative R&B Song and the Centric Award was Soul Approved, etc. Have you even heard of those categories? Nope. But guess what? You ain't never seen another me and you never will. No ego here. Why? Because it's none needed. My award is waking up every morning and caking off of what I believe in by the grace of God. Let Freedom Reign in stores November the 30th. Go pick that up. Maybe I'll call my fourth album Winners, just like everybody else. Maybe not. I pray that with every song I'm singing, I sing from the bottom of my heart. If all we want is an award for telling our truths, then we really have no true reason. This isn't a competition. This is a stage for self-expression, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to live on it. I'd sing even if nobody sang along. From the bottom of my disappointed heart, hip-hop, man up. I wanted to be supportive, but I can't understand you. I believed in you, but apparently you're so high you can't even see what the world needs. Is all hip-hop like that? Absolutely not, but some of it certainly is. Let me spit a few bars. I'm not that kind of hip-hop. I rep hip-hop too, but not that kind of ego-tripping foolery. Signed, Chrisette Michelle, the girl on that Aston Martin music record. 
However, Rick Ross would fire back against the claims in an interview with Tim Westwood, saying, Basically, I had an opportunity to perform Aston Martin music, which Def Jam put together. The day before the awards, I went there for rehearsal. It was a lot of things going on on stage, and for the first time, me being at an award show, I had no input. It was a little uncomfortable. I've been going to award shows for a long time, and I've never had a problem with who won. I'm happy I'm even recognized. We were in the trailer going over these particular performance issues with the show's producer. Out of respect, we came back out there to give them a reaction to the nomination. They gave the award to Eminem. I applauded. Big record. That wasn't the issue. Like I said, the things we requested weren't met. It had nothing to do with Chrisette Michelle. It may have had to do with me not knowing the other 50 people that were on stage at rehearsal when we were doing my record. I haven't spoken to Chrisette or her team, but I didn't speak to her to invite her to the show either. It was something that maybe the label set up, but her choice of words were ugly. Denouncing hip-hop? That ain't cool. Using ugly words could give off the wrong impression. That could make your hat look ugly to me now. That could make your haircut look ugly to me now. Hopefully if we win a Grammy, she'll come out and accept it with your boy. Give me a kiss on the cheek. Essentially, the Soul Train Awards had a certain criteria that they wanted their artists to adhere to. And when Rick Ross felt like he didn't have a certain level of control in production, he decided to bounce. But not letting Chrisette know his intentions and then ghosting her, I mean, how else was she supposed to feel? Unfortunately, Chrisette would be the one to feel the ramifications from not being able to perform, as her album sales were disappointing, and she faced backlash from social media users and many bloggers who felt like she was being high and mighty and speaking ill on hip-hop as a whole, despite her making the clear distinction in her post. She dropped three singles for this new album, I'm a Star, Goodbye Game, and a song that Jasmine Sullivan omitted from her 2010 album and then gave to Chrisette called I Don't Know Why But I Do. But these songs made little impact, whereas the neo-pinned So Cool and So In Love featuring Rick Ross would have done numbers, man. Such a missed opportunity. This would also mark the end of her collaboration and friendship with Rick Ross, and the two would not speak to one another for six years following this fallout. This, however, did not sever her ties with other hip-hop artists, as she would appear on Wale's song Money Changes and on 2 Chainz' song Black Unicorn, and even on Eve's song Never Gone. Chrisette would go on to drop a beautiful body of work called Audrey Hepburn, which featured the underrated gem Charades, and Chrisette did not come to play on that joint, y'all. It is one of her best songs. 2 Chains would also make an appearance on the song's remix. Other hits included Pray Me Well, which speaks on someone looking for love in foreign places, distant faces, but coming up short every time, which I can relate to on a personal level. Other songs include Can the Cool Be Loved, featuring Bilal. The EP was nice, but it would be her fourth album, Better, released on June 11, 2013, that would spawn her signature song, A Couple of Forevers, which is the ultimate wedding anthem and a very beautiful tune with beautiful words. Other standout tracks from that album include the title track, Ten Foot Stilettos, and the song You Mean That Much To Me, which I loved so much I actually created a lyric video for it, and it went viral, once someone else posted it, of course. Chrisette would go on to support several artists on tour, from Keisha Cole to Jaheim. She said in an interview, My name is Tour. That's all I do 250 days out the year, but I love it. By now, Chrisette was in her rhythm and decided to switch things up by joining reality TV, specifically R&B Divas LA for the show's second season, a decision she would later have reservations about. She was not at all a fan of how she was portrayed on the show. She came across as taking herself too seriously and trying too hard to make friends with one of the other divas, Shantae Moore. Their little hiccups became Chrisette's entire storyline, essentially. I know Chrisette is an issue somewhere in there. And what's funny is everything she accused me of, she was doing at that second. Being mean and being um, two-faced or whatever. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even really understand um, all of her issue with me. I'm sure we'll figure it out. But um, I thought she just spoke disrespectfully. And it's not that I'm like, oh, you must respect me. Mm -hmm. Just person to person, you have to speak to people with kindness. And it seemed uh, pretentious that she would be, I won't even speak to you. I shan't even. I'm like, just speak regular. Because off screen, you don't talk like that. You don't. Uh. And then secondly, I didn't say what she said. I said I never said I'm afraid or nervous or being taken over by newbies or something like that. That's not even my language. I don't even say newbies. I don't even speak that. That's that cool language of the hipsters. I'm not hip. I'm goofy. I'm a goofy mm -hmm. girl. Chrisette was also highly sensitive and was not prepared for all the backlash that came for reality TV, 
nor was she fond of longtime fans going out of their way to let her know, hey, we like your music, but not you as a person after seeing the way you acted on that show. Well, you know, every once in a while, there'll be like a, you know, fans of Shantae Moore tweet, you know, and I'll just block that user, you know, but that's just one person out of hundreds of thousands, literally. Uh, so I can't, you know, let that affect me. And I'm working on being less sensitive. So if you got something crazy to say, congratulations, have a nice day. I have to learn how to balance uh, experiencing everything uh, and being sensitive with saying that wasn't for me. That wasn't for me to experience. That's not mine. I don't own that. Though Chrisette maintained that the portrayals were inaccurate, and after the returning for the third season and seeing just how the producers were drumming up new drama, she didn't like the direction that the show was heading in, so she quit mid-season, and the show would be canceled shortly thereafter. Yet Chrisette was fond of the connection she made with all the girls, and even with reality TV and the media trying to pull them apart, she made sure to keep in touch with the girls even after her exit. This is where being the product of psychologist parents came in clutch. Unfortunately, this did not help Chrisette as much in the love department, as when she started out with Four Kings Productions as early as 2005, she began a romantic relationship with the company's CEO, Douglas Ellison, who also became one of her managers. Well, in 2007, Chrisette filed a lawsuit against Four Kings, alleging that Doug's company had embezzled money from her Def Jam contract. Although she later dropped the lawsuit, Doug claimed that the whole ordeal damaged his reputation. He would then file a $20 million lawsuit against Chrisette a Def Jam executive, and even Chrisette's parents for allegedly interfering with their contract. This would lead to the pair not speaking to one another for nearly seven years through the litigation process. But in 2015, they would rekindle their love and would become engaged and secretly married a short time later. But after reality TV left such a bad taste in her mouth, she decided to keep her marital status a secret from the public for a few years only telling the press that they were engaged. She would enlist Four Kings production for the creation of her next project, which were to be released through her newly independent label called Rich Hipster, a name derived from the collaboration she did with Wale. She was excited to launch her Rich Hipster branding company, which also consisted of her Rich Hipster Bell clothing line, and equally excited to take her music in a new creative direction. As an artist, one thing I've decided to do is not worry. Not worry about where my art takes me. Uh, because if you're a true artist, it's going to take you somewhere else next. And then that might be cool. Uh, so I just got to do what I feel at the moment and sort of say la vie, seize the day. I'm working on something called the Lyricist Opus, which is all live instrumentation. I'm hiring a full orchestra and it's all about the sound of the music, matching that to the sound of my voice, and then the lyrics. So I'm excited for the acoustic music album. Uh, it's kind of hard to ask record labels these days to hire orchestras, so you gotta do it yourself. As Soon as I got the money together, uh, I was like, it's time for the Lyricist Opus. She would release her first live EP called The Lyricist Opus in January of 2015, ahead of her fifth studio album entitled Milestone, which was released five months later. The first single was called Unbreakable and featured a new side of Chrisette and a sound sonically different from any of her previous music. And after recording the song, Equal, which was initially a venting session aimed at Doug after the pair had an argument, she decided not to use it for the album. However, Doug would take the song and send it to Rick Ross, who used it as his way to make amends with Chrisette by recording a verse for it and apologizing to Chrisette on the record for his previous actions and admitting that he's been in love with her since their Aston Martin music collaboration six years earlier. This version of the song would make its way onto the album and would become its second single. The album itself would debut in the top five of the top R&B hip hop albums chart. For promo, she would do a combination of the Milestone tour and would join Music Soul Child, Dave Hollister, MC Light, Marsha Ambrosis, and Raheem Devon in the Love Jones musical tour with over 35 tour dates. Reviews of the Love Jones tour, however, were mixed because not everyone was present for every event. Marsha was pregnant at the time, and on some nights it would be just Chrisette and Raheem by themselves. But it wasn't all about the music for Chrisette. Since the beginning of her career, she sought to mentor young women and girls through different programs, and at one point she started a podcast where she revealed her PCOS diagnosis and became a guide for women who also struggled with it. In 2015, she went on a pose and post tour up and down the East Coast to raise awareness around female entrepreneurship. She would give away eight scholarships to eight different women as well as gift certificates to several women's clothing stores. She would go on to start Rich Hipster University, an online mentorship program helping develop young talents. Today in your journal, I want you to take some time to really write down what it is that people need from 
you. This way you can begin to imagine how to give to them. You build your audience by feeding a need. You don't build your audience by being the greatest, being the coolest, being the biggest. You build your audience by loving people and giving them something that enhances their life. She was fervent in making appearances at events for the community as well. Performing at the BET Soul Cypher with Layla Hathaway, KC and Eddie Levert, alongside Erica Badu on the ones and twos, she sang at the 45th Annual Legislative Congressional Black Caucus, and sang for the Obamas a number of times, including her performance at a state dinner in August of 2016. So when, at the top of 2017, she was approached to sing at one of the inaugural events for the soon-to-be President Donald Trump, whose presidential win was highly controversial, many of her peers and fans were sure that she would turn down the invitation as a form of protest. However, Chrisette, who used her voice to bring joy throughout even the deepest of pains, felt the calling to use her voice as a message of healing. When this happened, and we were all devastated, I mean, I didn't vote for Trump, and I'm sure you didn't, and I think that was just something that was really uh, painful for everybody. I think everybody was in shock. The only thing I could think to do is say, how can we heal? How can we lift each other up in this really uncomfortable, scary time? Um, and so my intention was to bring healing. We sang a gospel song with Travis Green. I backed him up. As word got out about her upcoming performance, rumors began to swirl about her possibly receiving upwards of 750 k for the gig, which led to the Roots member Questlove offering to pay Chrisette not to perform. But Chrisette maintained that she wasn't in it for the money and that the check she received was no different from the checks that she had normally received for her gigs. Her good friend and mentor Spike Lee would then take to social media to announce that he was no longer using her song Black Girl Magic in his upcoming Netflix series. As more and more scheduled artists began backing out of performing for Trump, and even as Chrisette's close friends and family begged her not to perform, she only used this as more motivation to walk into what she felt was like walking through the valley of the shadow of death. She was on a mission. She had sang for the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan where she could have easily lost her life, so she wasn't new to uncomfortable environments. And ahead of the performance, she would pin a poem called No Political Genius, which went in depth about her intentions, saying that she would rather shift for love and unity than shift for division. Though initially asked to sing the national anthem, she would decline, opting to recruit gospel artist Travis Green to do a rendition of All Things Are Working Together For My Good, the same performance that they did at BET's Celebration of Gospel the year prior. And on January 20th, 2017, they would take to the inaugural ball stage to perform together to be a representation for people of color, letting everyone know that despite the current circumstances, that all things will work together for the good of those who love God, as he is never failing. However, the message wasn't well received at all, and where the Obamas embraced Chrisette with open arms, with Michelle attending her concerts and Barack naming her as one of his favorite R&B artists of all time, Trump, on the other hand, didn't as much as say one word to Chrisette after her performance. She told Billboard, Originally, I was supposed to perform directly after his first speech, and I had done that with Barack Obama before, so I was used to that kind of experience. But the woman who organized the event came and told me, Now you're going to go first and he's going to go after you. I looked her in the eye and I said, My family has disowned me. If you decide to Google me, you'll see that America is writing about me in their newspapers. I am the black poster child for Discord right now and he's not going to shake my hand? So no, I didn't get to meet him. But this would be the least of Chrisette's troubles, as she would be instantly blackballed from the entire music industry, as there was also a radio ban placed on her music and all of her upcoming gigs were canceled. Promoters stopped reaching out as people refused to work with her. She wasn't the biggest artist on the scene to begin with, but the support she did have withered away overnight, and she was dropped from her distribution deal with Capitol and Caroline Records. When her phone did ring, it was blowing up with hate mail and death threats, causing Chrisette to change her phone number. She released a spoken word and a few singles including Strong Black Woman and Black Lives Matter, but this only added more fuel to the fire. The industry was through with Chrisette, and the big names that she had worked with in the past would up and abandon her. The only two celebrities to come to her defense in all of this was her cousin Raheem and India Ari, who's always looking out for artists within her community. But both Raheem and India too received harsh criticisms for defending Chrisette. And as previously mentioned, several of her family members also disowned her. Mind you, this was the same Chrisette that had employed many of her family members once her career had taken off and she was on the road. But none of that mattered. None of what she ever did for her community mattered. 
I didn't anticipate my own fans um, being as enraged. I thought that they had heard the album that I put out um, called uh, Let Freedom Reign. I thought that they heard me sing Black Girl Magic. I thought that they had seen me uh, go to Harvard University and talk about black art f- and, 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 and how we can use art to, to change that social. That black the social. don't matter when you do right. something they don't like. I thought, they, I thought some of my accolades would have stood for who I am, um, and, I, and, and they didn't. See, I think that's the problem, though. I think people want political geniuses to talk to Trump, even though Trump's not a politician. Right. I think when they look at you, right. they're like, why is Chrisette Michelle talking to Donald Trump? What could she possibly because say? Because I'm as upset as y'all are, and... And I'm invited to a lot of people's offices. I'm invited to a lot of mayor's offices. And so if by some chance we could have a conversation and somebody could tell me what to say, God forbid I have to use somebody else's money. Gotcha. Because Spike Lee don't got me. Damn. He's the person who created Crooklyn and is telling people that he's not going to pay me for a song he never called me about. Mm -hmm. So teach me, please. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm much rather, and if he was here right now, I would much rather have a conversation than a tweet. He's not going to be able to show me anything because he doesn't even want to have a conversation. So I invite him right now. Let's have a conversation. Let's and talk, Quest please. Well. Quest Love, one of my Quest peers, Love somebody who I you not to perform, and I would have paid him to perform. I mean, that's that's where it's at. You know what I mean? If 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 Quest Love, who I've worked with on his music, doesn't know that I didn't go there for money, then we don't know each other. Mm. None of us know each other. You did utilize the platform, but you didn't like make a stand. You, you did you listen? At the did you listen? I did did I you see my Basquiat skirt? Like I am an artist. I wasn't given a microphone to be a speaker, so I wore Basquiat there. And on my Basquiat skirt showed us being hung, showed us being beaten by police, showed the brutality, and nobody listened. Oh, you didn't listen, and and, and 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 they they're still calling. Congressmen are now calling me. So. I'll go there. I think you should have wore a Black Lives Matter T-shirt. I wrote a song. I wrote a song, Black Girls, Black Girl Magic, and Spike Lee won't play it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even if you would have said it on stage, like Black Girl Magic, I did. I did. You You wasn't listening. You wasn't watching. White House invites me. You call me their coon. I am the butterfly growing from history's cocoon. I (laughs) carry the mantle with God as my goon. He provides the life support. I'm dying singing his tune. When you say wanting to heal, I mean what jumps out is. who are you trying to heal? Right. Who are you trying to heal? Mm-hmm. African Americans, America, or Trump? Seeing a strong black woman or a woman who's been a part of this community for such a long time, to, you know, been a voice in this community for such a long time, I thought that I would be talking to us. I really did. Um, that was what I was thinking. R&B singer Chrisette Michelle. Yes, Chrisette mm-hmm. Michelle, and she's been getting a ton of backlash, I guess, for performing at one of the inaugural balls for President Trump. Michelle said her performance was about building bridges, not, you know, supporting, but, you know, it's all drama. Living Oklahoma's learned that she will no longer be starring in Love Jones, the musical, which if you remember, we yeah. had um, a bunch of the cast here and a bunch of the producers here, and she was the lead in that musical. The whole thing was produced right here in OKC. Coco from SWV, she's going to be taking over the lead role, and also joining the cast uh, will be Elle DeBarge. So, hmm. I mean, big names, but, you know, a lot of people are in shock because Chrisette is leaving the show. And we did speak with producer Melvin Child. Now, he wouldn't say that the move was because of Chrisette singing for the Trump event, but he did say, quote, we both thought it was in the best interest of the show. She reportedly received $250,000 for singing at the inaugural ball. Chrisette lost everything. Meanwhile, Travis Green went on to have a prosperous career immediately following the inaugural performance. He told the Christian Post that he had no regrets for the performance, saying, I prayed very hard about the decision and that was it. Once God gave me the green light and told me it was a go, it was very simple from that point on. So no, I have no regrets. It's something that I knew I was supposed to do and that I did and it was way more positive feedback than negative feedback. So many believers and so many people in the world of sports and entertainment and everywhere that I meet all appreciate and have shown gratitude for our faith move and taking the gospel of Christ to the capital. Essentially the same intentions that Chrisette had, yet the aftermath for him was much different. As just two months after the performance, Travis would perform at and win seven stellar awards, including Male Vocalist of the Year. He returned the following year after having released his number one album, Crossover, in August of 2017, which he not only won Male Vocalist of the Year again, but also Artist of the Year this time around. He also won a Billboard Award for Top Gospel Song in 2017, and his new album received nominations for a Grammy Award and an NAACP Award. Cancelled where? And because of this, 
along with the unpunished shenanigans of Kanye West essentially becoming Trump's puppet around this time, has led many people in hindsight to accuse the black community of being harsher on black women than black men. And while I do agree that there are many cases of black women receiving far less grace than their male counterparts, this situation goes far deeper than that. For one, you had Tina Campbell, one half of the gospel duo Mary Mary, who openly told the world that she voted for him as he appealed to her Christian values more than his opponent, Hillary Clinton. She also penned an open letter on Facebook stating that she believed in Trump and believed that a people led by Trump, united under God, will never be defeated and would double down on her statements. I don't care to defend what I said, so just for anybody out there who has an opinion, have it. I put mine out there, and that's all I wanted to say. I didn't like either one of the candidates, if I can be honest. If there was another choice, I would have picked another choice, but there was not another choice. And there was some views, um, some specific views that pertain to my Christianity that made me decide I'm not going to vote for the other candidate. Did I agree with the can everything that the candidate um, that I chose is doing? Good Lord, no. The enemy is the devil. That's who the enemy is. And so I choose to be mad at the devil and I choose to fight on my knees. I ain't black first. I ain't a woman first. I'm a Christian first. I'm a child of God and my allegiance is to God first. I'm down with everybody. Those that are hateful right. and ignorant. You know what? I bet you if I let the devil consume me, I'd be ignorant just like you. So I have compassion for you. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the devil that's behind you because you his puppet. That's why you're acting like a clown. Here you have a black woman unapologetic about her decision and couldn't nobody tell her nothing. And just like that, nothing bad happened to her career. People tried to point out low ticket sales and her postponing her tour as payback, but she had already postponed tours before, as she was not that big of a solo artist to sell out arenas. Tina is more known for her collaborative works with her husband Teddy or her sister in their group. But don't get it twisted. She dropped her album It's Still Personal in 2017, which went number two on the gospel charts, and its lead single, Too Hard Not To, snagged her first solo Grammy Award nomination at the 2018 Grammys, and her second single won a stellar award for best music video. If you were canceled, you ain't winning no awards. And she's still gone on to prevail in her career, and if Mary Mary dropped an album tomorrow, it would go straight to number one on the gospel charts. Period. In the end, nothing bad happened to her career. Nothing bad happened to any of the black women in Travis's entire choir, who still tour with him to this day. Chrisette was not the only black woman up on that stage, but everyone else got away unscathed. You even have black women like Candace Owens, Diamond, and Silk, who made literal careers out of being black female conservatives with a difference of opinion. Though they face backlash, they've been very fruitful in their efforts, and up until Diamond's untimely passing this past year, nothing bad happened to any of their careers. As time went on, you not only saw endorsements from the likes of Kanye and Steve Harvey, but also from rappers like Lil Wayne, Ice Cube, and even 50 Cent at one point. And though everyone faced some type of inevitable backlash, no one was effectively canceled. The only person who had something bad happen to their career from this entire fiasco is Chrisette Michelle. Everyone else got to put out music in 2017, while Chrisette's 2017 album would be shelved indefinitely after she was dropped. This was not a black man versus black woman thing, alright? What this was, was a personal vendetta against Grissette by the powers that be, and by the black community. And I'm gonna break down the reasons why. For one, Grissette was the only person out of everyone I just mentioned to openly come out and say that she did not vote for him. I didn't vote for Donald Trump. There are a group sure? of people, positive. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, just to be clear, people, not you're me. not a Donald Trump supporter, just so we can be clear about that. Let's talk about what it means to support people really fast. Mm -hmm. Does that mean did I pay for his thing? Does that mean that I vote for him? I did none of those things. Does that things. mean that you Does that mean that I agree with all of the awful rhetoric that I'm hearing? Absolutely not. Now Trump is a businessman first, okay? So when others were being drugged through the mud at his expense, him and his following took up for them because they endorsed him. But with Chrisette's position, what else could the Trumpets do but let her fall on her own sword? Sure, he used her for what he could get out of the situation by her appearing at his inauguration, but ultimately he can't do anything with somebody who ain't on his team. Travis and Tina were gospel artists first, therefore they were covered by the blood essentially, as their following is centered around Christ. And though Chrisette sang gospel and did many gospel events, she had one foot in the genre and one foot out. Her main following was R&B, and while many of her fans like myself stood by her, others weren't here for it. Also, many folks within the black community felt hopeless witnessing the politics around them, and the only way for certain people to vent their frustrations was on social media and to Chrisette. She essentially became an outlet for folks to unleash their anger. 
Some people would literally wake up some days and send her a death threat just for the hell of it. She endured intense cyberbullying and immense stress to the point where she suffered a miscarriage. She disclosed that she was also diagnosed with bipolar disorder and would also post a gut-wrenching photo of another woman's miscarriage as an example of what she endured with her own miscarriage. But this backfired, as it was seen as a disingenuous ploy to gain sympathy from the general public. Frustrated and feeling like she was going to be crucified no matter what she did, she would take down the post and go ghost. She spent her time away in solitude, focusing on God, meditation, and healing. And throughout this journey, she would emerge as a stronger woman. I am so comfortable in my skin. You can't take this away from me. Come on. But before, I almost thought that somebody might take me away from me. Mm. I, I would get shocked when I kept singing. I would say, why am I singing? I would cry to God, why am I still writing, God? Mm. Why are my hands still on this piano this way? Why do I still want to see people smile when I say, what is, am I insane? That I still believe in the gift that you've given me? Mm. He didn't cancel me. But if people didn't cancel me, I don't know that I would have fallen in love with who God loves. She slowly found her way back to herself, releasing her last studio album to date called Out of Control, which is an album full of reflection and personal growth. And within the name on the cover art, the word rise was emboldened, a subtle yet important message. Though the album was largely produced with her then husband Doug, she announced just a year later that they had filed for divorce, as Doug wanted a traditional family, but Chrisette said that she was too immature, that she was still a kid at heart, and even pointed out the fact that she walked down the aisle to Selena Gomez's techno hit, Love You Like a Love Song. She said that, I think I got married to try adulting on for a size, and it didn't fit. Surprisingly enough, she caught heat for even these statements, but in the end, Chrisette reaffirmed, I'm not pressed to recreate my whole existence to fit into someone else's, and then be stuck in one place forever? Yeah, no, not right now. During the pandemic, she went on to start an Instagram video chat series called The Sistership, where she would have deep intellectual conversations with her followers about life, love, health, and positive affirmations, as her biggest concern was opening the lines of communication and healing the disconnection. She wanted her sisters to come aboard the ship with her, which was a metaphor for the journey to inner healing, peace of mind, and an overall better lifestyle. Grissette became a certified yoga instructor and even opened up a rich hipster studio in New York where she also taught vocal coach lessons. Her entrepreneurial efforts didn't go by unnoticed as she started getting gigs to bring her talents to many HBCUs around the country. My friend Travis Green and I decided that we would sing in the very place that seemed like the darkest hour of America. And in that moment, we said all things are working for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He's intentional, never failing. And that was the first time that Chrisette Michelle, the R&B singer, made a declaration that she believes God is God and is still on the throne. Yeah. Oh. Pastor, today you said you will be persecuted before you rise. Oh, I was hated around the world for those words that came out of my mouth. Some people didn't even hear the words that I said, but they saw the spirit of what I said and hated me to their best ability. And I couldn't stop loving. The media kept calling me canceled, but God kept saying, keep singing, Chrissy. Keep singing, Chrissy. Keep singing, Chrissy. I lived in the most beautiful penthouse I've ever lived in in my entire life while canceled. And my black card was taken. And I got on my knees and I said, God, where would you have me to go? And he said, I would have you to go to Atlanta. So I went to, a, I went to Atlanta, the place where this black card of mine was taken. And when I tell you, I was embraced like you wouldn't believe. I was lifted like you wouldn't believe. HBCU started asking me to come in and speak at their schools. I said, but I was canceled 10 minutes ago. But he'll set up a table for you in the place of your mind. And your enemies will start forgetting that they're your enemies. 
and they'll start asking you for prayer. Can you come and speak at our conference? So I'm so full because you, you spoke to my story today. You brought it full circle for me today. Last night I had a dream and I woke up this morning a little bit upset, a little bit distraught because I knew that I was going to have to leave some things in the past. But you said today is a day of new beginnings. So I'm accepting that. I'm agreeing with that. But I want you to know today you don't have to lose your faith. You don't have to think God forgot about you. You don't have to change your mind about God because society changes its mind about you. You can still believe that God is sovereign. You can still have peace. You can still smile. You can still jump for joy even when it looks like the world around you is upside down. God is still on the throne. He really is. And so I pray that you be encouraged today. In 2021, she launched a new clothing line, Moody by Chrisette Michelle. She would later star in the holiday films Miracles Across 125th Street and The Christmas Ringer and would also appear alongside Rudy Currents in the duet No Greater Love, singing praises to their Heavenly Father. In 2023, her hit song Epiphany would start making rounds on TikTok, which then led to a viral remix which had some pretty influential TikTokers doing their own unique dances to the trend. Epiphany would then spend a total of five weeks on the TikTok Top 50 chart, peaking at number four. Well, all right then. Also in 2023, she would embark on the Soft Life Circle Inner Wellness Tour, which consisted of a live acoustic concert, yoga sessions, and each attendee creating a harvest bowl of their choosing, among other activities. All in all, Chrisette has prevailed through the fire, and even though some people are hell-bent on keeping her canceled, she knows that their opinions aren't her burden to bear. She instead continues to be a guiding light to those who choose to listen. And still, she rises. This is Justified by Jury. Y'all know how to hit that like. Y'all know how to hit that subscribe. If you want to, do so. And I'm going to catch y'all on the next video.